Welcome into the Thursday episode of the David Hookstead Show, last regular episode of the week. It's going to be a quick one, going to be a very short one. I got some things I got to jump to, so we got to make this quick. We're only going to go over two topics today. First and foremost, we have seen more videos come out of Ukraine of just insane combat footage. Most, uh, most notably, there's been two videos of Russian armor. One is a Russian armor column getting absolutely hammered by a single Ukrainian tank. And then there was another video that came out of a Russian tank that got obliterated and turned into a ball of fire during some skirmish altercation, kind of appeared to be almost in a wooded area. And frankly, it's just another reminder that the Ukrainians are refusing to roll over and and die. They're refusing to just put down their weapons and let Putin conquer the whole country. That's not going to happen. They're fighting like absolute motherfuckers. They're fighting like dogs against the Russian invaders. And as I've said before, and I'll say again, when your country's invaded, you have no choice but to fight back. When your country's invaded, you have one strategy on the table and one strategy only, and that is to go complete red dawn. It is get weapons into the hands of everyone that you can, get weapons onto the street, and force the Russians to pay in blood for every single inch they want to take. Make it bloody, make it constant shootouts, make them constantly looking over their shoulders, and make them pay such a high price, they eventually decide to pack it up and go home. It's that simple. You cannot allow your country to get steamrolled just because you're a smaller military, you're a smaller nation. you got to fight. I mean, look... We, the United States of America, have learned firsthand that a small but dedicated force of fighters can cause huge problems and become a huge headache for you. Now, obviously, our military is light years more competent than the Russians. We're better supplied. We're better trained. We're better armed. We have better technology. We have better gear. We have better everything across the board than the Russians do. But the Russians still have one of the largest militaries in the world, and they're struggling right now in Ukraine. Yes, they have taken some territory, but they are struggling much more than anyone ever thought they would. So I give all the credit in the world to the Ukrainians. They continue to fight. They continue to hammer the enemy. They continue to do what they do best. And uh, all, all the props in the world to them, I hope they continue to stick it in Putin's face as long as possible. Finally, the other subject of the day, Coach K uh, revealed that he does not plan on unretiring. He was asked about it during a recent interview amid speculation that he might come out of retirement. Uh, Jeez, per usual, my hair is just out of control. I, I I just got a haircut not that long ago, like a month ago maybe, and it's already back. Uh, it's already back to being a mess. Anyways, he was asked if he plans on unretiring. He said no. He said that part of his career is done. I know it makes for fun speculation to wonder. Okay, they lost in the Final Four to UNC, probably the worst loss in program history when you look at the impact from a, uh, from a prestige standpoint. They lost to their you know most bitter rival. It's one of the most historic rivalries in all of sports, probably the biggest rivalry without question in college basketball. They lost in the Final Four to him. Obviously, UNC then lost in the national title game to Kansas. Would he come back? Would he coach one more season instead of John Shire taking over right away? And he says, no, he's done coaching. That part of his life's over. He has no interest in doing it anymore. He's moved on. He's hung up his whistle. And you know what? After as many decades as he spent coaching, what was it, about 43 years-ish, 40-ish years that he spent coaching? Good for him. He's earned the right to not have to coach anymore. He's earned some rest and relaxation. And I hate Duke. I mean, they stole a ring right off my finger in 2015. I can't stand him. But you got to respect him. I mean, he made, what, 13 Final Fours? How many national titles do he win? Five or six? So you got to respect Duke, even if you don't like him. At the end of the day, he was a hell of a coach. I, I can't stand the Blue Devils. Like I said, they stole a ring right off my finger in 2015. But, hell of a run. I mean, he's the Nick Saban of college basketball. There's no other way to look at it. But he's not coming back, so stop talking about it. Stop getting your hopes up. It is not going to happen. Our beat is not going to happen. Anyways, that's all we have. I know it was a short episode today. We're on a major, major, major time crunch. It is what it is. But I'll catch you all here back Monday for a brand new episode.